What's going on guys? I'm gonna talk about my thoughts with the Big Bass Bash coming up here April 23rd and 24th of 2022. The people who put on the Big Bass Bash are really organized. They run other tournament trails throughout the Midwest. Uh, they have it down to a science now. They have multiple weigh-in points, good payouts. Uh, you have a chance to win a Phoenix boat just for entering. Of course, everyone's main goal is to win $100,000 for catching the biggest fish of the tournament. But all in all, you get a lot for your money. You get two days of fishing with a lot of opportunity to win your money back and then some. It's always fun to fish this event because instead of going out looking for your best five, you can hunker down and look for just one big bite to win you a lot of money. So looking at the lake in general, just looking at some data for some previous years, it seems that we are just a little bit behind on water temperature. You know, we've had a little bit of a wild spring so far. We've kind of had some good weather and then it dumps off into a little bit colder weather and a lot of rain and then it will get into a few days of warm weather and then it drops right back off. So as water temperature has been steadily increasing now, uh, it seems like we can't get in a really good warming trend, which is what the lake really needs to get the fish really, really moving uh, and kind of thinking about the spawn. So the water temperature around the lower end near the dam is hovering around 50 degrees. Now, if you get a nice day or a couple of nice days in a row, you can go into some of these creeks up here, especially the ones that are facing to the south, and you can find some water temperatures, you know, in the mid 50s, maybe even in the upper 50s. I've heard some reports from people finding water in the upper 50s, especially like uh, mid lake region. But with the nighttime temperature still getting pretty chilly, you know, that sucks that warmth right back out of that shallow water. So just looking back at some data in 2015, the water temperature was right around 60 upwards to like 62 63 degrees during the bash so you know that was an event where the fish were on the spawn but that is definitely not going to be the case this year not to say that if we don't get some good warm weather the remaining of this week or in the week leading up to the event you know that will help push some fish up but you're never gonna get the water temperature to where it needs to be to have the first wave of fish really pull up and actually spawn so it's just going to be a pre-spawn event so that could be really really good weights so i'll be curious to see what the weights are going to be i have a feeling it's going to take pretty big fish to get a check this year. Now in regards to all that and water temperature, just remember on the lower end, it's like the most stable end of the lake, the water temperature is usually gonna be a little bit cooler than say, you know, down in the glaze where you get some stained water, be a little bit warmer, or especially as you start heading up the river here and you get in the shallower water here, it's kind of a different element. The fish are gonna be a little bit more ahead in the cycle uh, you know, versus the lower end. That's just the nature of the beast. And it's the beauty of the lake because you can fish in some stable water down here near the dam. You can kind of take your pick in between, go up the river arms, or you can go way up the river and fish like you're on a whole different lake. Now I'll go over some patterns throughout the lake to try and help you catch the big fish. Then I'll go over some baits later on, you know, exactly where I'd utilize them, what I like, and maybe, you know, help you out if you're looking for some ideas. So we're going to start out with the main lake. So you've got your main lake points, you have bluff ends, you have steep ledges, you have all sorts of things. And the beauty of the main lake is you have a lot of different areas to run. You could start from the beginning of day one and fish until the end of day two, and you wouldn't even put a dent in what you have available. So here's some examples of some classic bluff ends. You know, within these, you're gonna be looking for any sort of brush pile or docks, anything that may be in these cuts leading back into the shallow areas that can hold fish. Uh, on the actual bluff ends themselves, you know, you're gonna have rock changes where it's real steep here, and it, it's still, you know, steep here, but it's not nearly as steep as on this side. So you're gonna have your rock changes there, but you're also gonna have, you know, like here's an example where it kind of comes out and you have a little flat shelf here. This would be a great place to throw glide baits over them, a rig still with the water temperature being what it is. You can throw shaky heads, jigs. You have a lot of different options this time of the year. A lot of baits are coming into play and you can kind of play off whatever your strengths are. And the beauty with the main lake is you're going to have some fish that may have been, you know, still out in their kind of their wintertime areas and they haven't really pulled up. They've been out in deeper water and say they start pulling up maybe on some of these little islands out here or just on other points and you throw your bait across them, you know, they may not have seen a bait in a long time if they've been out suspended in no man land just chasing shad or something. So, you know, they can be easy to catch. And with the main lake, you know, if you have wind blowing, that's what I'm gonna be chasing after too. And another thing you need to keep in mind is current. If they have bagnell open generating current, especially if they have Truman and bagnell open running water through, uh, you'll have exceptional current and that will really help the main lake bite. But in order for them to both be open and just running the water straight through, I think we'd have to have extremely heavy rains since they're gonna start to be filling Lake the Ozarks up to get it to full pool before Memorial Day. But you can always call the Lake the Ozarks hotline, which I will put in this video here and uh, they'll tell you kind of their current generation schedule and their plans for the week. So you may be able to call in advance to kind of figure out, hey, are they gonna be running current or are they not? If that's something you wanna target or if you wanna move on to a different plan. Another good pattern is staging areas and good stopping points. So what I mean by that is secondary points, rock transitions, things of that nature. But with the water temperatures picking up, you're gonna have a lot of fish that are gonna be in transition. So your secondary points or your transition banks 
are good places to look. As far as your transition banks go, I'm starting to focus on that smaller rock. On your channel swings or channel banks itself, you're gonna usually have a little bit bigger busted up rock. It's gonna be steeper. And as you start to filter your way in, like this area here is gonna be a much finer you know, rock, kind of like a pea gravel. Now you don't have to totally focus just on pea gravel, uh, but for us lately, it's been uh, pea gravel mixed in with some medium size to maybe say up to like softball size rock has kind of been the best banks for us. A good way to confirm kind of what the rock is before you get to the lake, if you don't have an opportunity to go up there and kind of scout around before the tournament, is get on Google Earth. You have to download the version of Google Earth so you can uh, use the go back in time feature here. This is uh, March of 2012, as you can see, and this is the same cove we were just looking at here, but you can actually go in here and see uh, kind of the rock change. So you can see this is the channel bank, kind of where the creek channel runs up along these docks, and you can tell around this area, it swings out and goes into the gut, and this is where you kind of get this finer rock. So you can use this as a tool to go through and find different areas that you may want to fish or that may look good on avionics and actually you know, kind of make a milk run of those things. So maybe this would be your plan A, maybe this would be your plan B type pattern if you know plan A is not working out. I would find these type areas on avionics and I'd go on my phone and drop a pin here of kind of what it is. You know, a channel swing leading up to like a flat bank with pea gravel or something. If you can make a milk around a 10 or 12 of those in a certain part of the lake or different areas of the lake, uh, you know, that gives you just a good option to fall back on. So during the tournament, you're not running around trying to make something happen. You have a good solid plan that you can run on and be efficient with your time. Another good pattern is spawning pockets. So what I mean by that is it could be main lake, it can be within like creeks and stuff, but just little areas like this where it's protected, it's shallow, the fish can slide up in here and then spawn when it's time and then slide back out to deeper water. So, you know, here's an example of just one on the main lake. Um, let's find this little pocket here, kind of what I'm talking about within a cove. So in this cove, you know, you could have fish that sit on this main lake point and then they kind of slide in down this bank into this nice shallow protected area. So this would be something you know, I would look at. Uh, same thing with this, they can come off the secondary point and kind of slide in. Just areas that are protected from wind, you know, you're gonna have shallower water. Generally, when you see it, something flatter like this, you're gonna have, you know, the right type of rock, the pea gravel. But when you're looking at something flat or these little cuts in here, um, you know, I'm looking to flip around the docks with jigs, brush hogs, you could throw buzz baits. There's a lot of different baits you can throw. Besides the obvious docks you can flip around like this or these docks in here, sometimes if you go into a little cut, we'll just use this one as the example, uh, you can find brush piles like just kind of out in the gut, just out in no man's land. They're really, you know, not close to the docks or anything. They're just out in the gut. And there can actually be some big fish that sit in those because they'll just sit in those piles out in a little bit deeper spot. You know, they're not as affected by the weather changes if we get these cold nights and stuff. They can work up in the shallows when it's warm and then they just slide back to that little pile and just kind of wait till it's time. So if you find a pile like that, you know, throw a spinnerbait over it, you throw a jig in it, you throw Carolina rigs. There's so many things you can throw, but uh, keep in mind, you know, those little piles, those can be little hidden gems. So the last pattern I'll talk about, we'll go down into kind of the Niangwe area here for fun. Uh, is just isolated shallow cover and with that we're also going to talk about like the back of the creeks you know the last 45 degree bank the last deep water where fish can sit also to kind of weather out these cold fronts and cold swings temperature changes just places where you know fish are traditionally stacked up we'll start with the isolated cover so if you're fishing some of these little pockets or you end up in a little creek like this say you find a lay down you run spinnerbait past it or something you catch a fish you know there might be something to that i'd run around different pockets, see if you can find any more laydowns and recreate that. But, you know, it's bonus points if you can find any sort of isolated cover. It doesn't have to be wood. It can even just be a dock. But, you know, something that's nearby, a little bit deeper water, but it's kind of a stepping stone into the shallow areas. You can even kind of just use the last dock or last couple docks in a little cut. Like this one might be good, or if you go over to a real shallow cut here, this dock's probably out of the water, but this one might be a little bit better. But if you can just even get, you know, some sort of pattern going on where if you know you can go into a pocket, fish the last two or three docks and get bites, that's going to make you a lot more efficient on the water. You're not going to be running around trying to fish a bunch of docks. You can kind of head right to the areas that you think are the most high percentage. Now we'll talk about some 45 degree banks kind of in the back of some pockets, just the last thing the fish can kind of hold on. So we'll zoom in. We'll see if we can find a decent one. Uh, this one runs in the gut for the most part. It's a little steep right here and then you can kind of see it comes up on this little outcropping. That might be a good spot fish can stage on. You know, that'd be something to take a peek at and just see what it actually looks like in there, but it looks relatively flat. Over here, kind of the same thing. You know, it's pretty flat in the back. It is a little more steep right here and it's relatively steep on here. So either of these sides kind of leading in would be good. Let's see if we can find just maybe a little bit better example. Here's a little bit better one. So you got your creek channel 
the old creek bed that runs in it's real steep here and then it's very steep on the edge before it kind of starts to flatten out you can see the creek bed swings away so you know this bank just for example would be something good that you can fish if you get a little bit of a cold snap or we have colder weather it just depends what the weather is at that time this is a great bank for fish to sit on close to the deep water and you know they're not going to be affected by the cold spells they can just kind of slide out a little bit but when it does warm up you know easy access to slide into where they want to go so those are some good patterns to help you catch some big fish during the big bass bash hopefully cash a check um, and a few things to just talk about is it's going to be crowded as usual the lake gets a lot of fishing pressure from this event uh, after all the pressure on day one it seems like the fish can kind of get a little skittish they slide out a little bit so say you're catching fish you know back in the pocket somewhere and I mean, day two comes around and you're just not getting the same bites, you know, maybe try backing off a little bit, see if the fish have suspended around the docks, slow down, and sometimes even a little bit more of a finesse approach can help get you some more bites. I know it can also be kind of a mental thing when you go to places, you pick a spot on the map, you go, oh, I'm going to go here, this is a perfect spot. You pull up, there's a boat here, there's a boat here, there's a boat back here, you know, you're like, man, where can I go? So when you see that, you can't get discouraged. Uh, you know, you can try and run around to different parts of the lake and maybe find something that's a little bit less crowded, but overall, you know, the whole lake's going to be pretty darn crowded unless maybe you run way up the rivers. But ultimately, you're just going to have to do your best to, you know, stay quiet, get your bait in places that are harder to reach that other people may not be willing to do. And sometimes just realize it's more about the time that you're there. You know, you may pull through on a secondary point and fish it and not catch anything, and someone may come an hour later and catch two or three off there. They may catch a big one or something or vice versa, you know. You're gonna go past a lot of areas and put your bait in front of a lot of fish, but they're not always gonna be willing to bite at that specific time. So if you can just cover water and get your bait in front of as many fish as possible, those are your best chances of connecting with a big fish. Now I'm gonna go over the baits to help you try and catch the big fish during this event. I'll kind of break them down in different groups, but for the most part, all these baits will work in any of the patterns that I had listed, except for the main lake. There'll be a few different baits that would kind of excel a lot more on the main lake where some of these other ones really won't work that well uh, but as far as everything else goes you know you can kind of implement them wherever you want so we'll start off with top water you're going to have buzz bait such as these you're going to have spooks you're going to have whopper ploppers uh, poppers all sorts of things like that and they're going to work you know you can throw them out in the main lake up shallow close to big busted up rocks and stuff you can go back in the pockets and throw out in spawn pockets you know it's going to work pretty well anywhere you want um, as far as colors go you know with buzz baits i'm usually either throwing a black buzz bait or a white buzz bait but I think it's mostly just, you know, whatever you have confidence in. Sometimes a popper or spook can be better in the springtime just because you can move it to where you want. Get in that strike zone and just let it sit there. Whereas a buzz bait, you know, you constantly got to keep it moving. So that's always something to keep in mind. So we'll move on to some more reaction style baits, moving baits. And the first up will be a spinner bait. You know, you have a ton of different combos. I think there's been a couple bashes that have been won on a spinner bait in the last couple of years. Uh, this is just a gold with a fluorescent red blade. It probably looks like an awful color because I have a light set up right here and it's washing out that color a little bit. Chartreuse white skirt, you know, good for muddier water. If you're in a little bit cleaner water, maybe down by the dam, uh, you know, consider throwing just like a white spinner bait with silver blade, gold blade, whatever. Again, that's a great bait to throw on the main lake. You can throw it in pockets along docks and things of that nature, or uh, lay downs, you know, it's just a good search bait and you're going to catch big fish on the spinner bait especially in the springtime next up is a chatter bait you know a lot of people throw these down south i don't know how popular it really is around like the ozarks i feel like quite a few people still throw them but uh you can't sleep on the old chatter bait it's just a fire crawl color you know you got your shad patterns a uh, great moving bait you can put some trailers on them you can skip them under docks uh good good base to cover water and next up we'll talk about a little square bill crankbait so this can be good back in your spawning pockets uh, secondary points you can cover a lot of water with these a lot of different colors this is a strike king uh, it might be a 2.5 i'm not sure 100 on that but um you know this is a good bait you know getting these bouncing off cover around shallow docks lay downs all those type of things also be great areas to catch fish on them and with that you can still you know obviously your rock crawlers your wiggle warts things of that nature are going to be in play uh, the square bill just will deflect off some cover a little bit better and especially if you're going to be really working in the shallow areas uh, that's a hard bait to beat another big player is going to be a jerk bait of course jerk baits are always good here in springtime especially in the ozarks i don't know what it is about them always catching fish on jerk baits yeah a lot of good colors this is lg bone from mega bass uh tennessee shad's good clown color is good if you get up in some dingier water uh wake and react it's really hard to go wrong with the jerk baits throw them on secondary points with the wind blowing on them transition banks, uh, working around docks, you know, a bunch of different ways you can catch fish on jerk bait. Then we'll get into some tried and true, a little bit slower moving baits. Um, you got your jigs, of course. You got a finesse jig, a regular jig. Uh, you notice here I've got a rage tail. It's kind of a bigger pitcher style crawl on there. 
just trailer. And then on the finesse jig, I don't have anything on here right now, but uh, we've been throwing a lot of the Crocker Gator ring crawls. That's kind of what I throw usually when the water gets, oh, around 50-ish and under, and I throw that all the way up until water gets around 50, even a little bit warmer, closer maybe to the 52, 53, yeah, it's mid 50s mark just say it's a really good trailer it doesn't have a ton of action uh, it's you know looks like a little small crawdad i always like throwing that on my finesse jigs and stuff throughout the winter and then as it does get warmer and i get a little bit bulkier profile and i want a you know bigger bait with some more action i'm usually throwing the rage tails or like a net bait pack chunk or something along that so jigs throw these anywhere main leg throw them on docks um, lay downs drag them around rock transitions throw a jig anywhere you want 365 days a year and uh, catch fish on them. Now, as the water is warming up, this is the fun time of the year when you start to get to break out these soft plastics again. So I've got two of them here, two classics. I got the Zoom Brush Hog and I've got just a Senko here. This is actually a Berkeley. This is actually a power bait, the general, I think they call it. But uh, you know, both of these baits, phenomenal, green pumpkin. Uh, I like to actually dip them in a little bit of chartreuse, depending on the water clarity. If you got a little bit of stain to it, you know, maybe a hint of chartreuse if it's got a good stain to it definitely chartreuse uh, if it's super clear might go for it might not it seem to be a little bit better when the water gets warmer and closer to that bluegill spawn that they really key in on that chartreuse but these baits you know flipping around docks you texas rig them you can carolina rig them uh, carolina rig is a big thing this time of the year getting these shallow spawn pockets with the pea gravel just fan cast that carolina rig around just drag it real slow like i was talking about if you find um brush piles in the guts in some of these areas in the little spawn pockets you know that's a great bait just to slowly drag it around it can be painful sometimes i can hate throwing it you know you're like oh the carolina rig i don't want to throw that thing but you can catch fish on it you can catch big fish on it so sometimes you know especially if the fish get a little pressured on day two that's something you got to do is just downsize a little bit throw a baby brush hog or uh throw a sinko on it and just drag carolina rig around real slow out on spawning pocket points or in the guts of them. And of course you're looking for that big bite during this event. So a glide bait, cannot forget to mention the glide bait. You know, a lot of people have been fishing them recently. Uh, and I've seen some few reports of people have actually been catching some decent numbers on the glide baits along with some pretty sizable fish on it. So, you know, if you really just wanna try and go for the one biggest bite you're gonna get the entire weekend, a glide bait's great. Uh, if you stop up at some local fishing shops there, I think Fitz has, uh, last time I was in there last weekend, they had a couple glide baits hanging up from uh, some of the custom makers around. I'm sure they got some bigger like mass produced ones too, but I know some of the custom ones that people really sought after, they had a couple uh, when I was up there, but I'm sure they will go fast. And something else as an example, just thinking outside the box a little bit that people don't throw up here a lot, is just like a little underspin uh, with the Kitech on it. You know, you can put a bigger Kitech on it if you're looking for bigger bites. But if you want to be a little more finessey, you know, like a 3.3 or a 3.8. Throw this around brush piles, docks, looking for suspended fish on bluff ends or main lake point or secondary points. Anytime the fish get pressured a little bit and back off and suspend, you know, this would be a great little bait to kind of attack them. Those are just some examples of some baits you can throw during the big bass bash to help you cash a check, catch some big fish. Hopefully if you're coming down, some of these patterns and baits will help you out and get you on some money fish. We'll all be fishing it. So if you see Nathan's boat or my boat out there, you know, stop, say hello. We'll be glad to talk to you guys. It's always fun seeing people out in the water and just talking to them and see how you're doing. So good luck to everybody and hopefully everyone can cash a check and maybe someone can be the lucky winner that wins the grand prize. Thanks for watching guys.